Bikers are a, a pimple on the butt of any city. Bikers uh, think that they own the road, they dodge in front and they dart, and you know, I feel unsafe. Yeah. Hi everyone, welcome to the Active Towns podcast, conversations about creating a culture of activity. My name is John Zimmerman. I'm the founder of the Active Towns Initiative, and I'm honored to serve as your host each week on this podcast journey. Thank you so much for tuning in. It's always wonderful to have you along for the ride. Well, this is it. This is the big one, <laughs> episode number 100. And I'm so stoked and honored to have Clarence Eckerson with Street Films on to celebrate and celebrate his milestone of reaching and surpassing 1,000 Street Films. To say that I've been influenced and inspired by his work would be a huge understatement. And he, just like fellow content creator Ryan Van Duzer, has always been so generous with his time and mentorship. I'm so humbled and grateful that he agreed to join me for this special episode. So enough with me gushing, let's just get on with it. I am so incredibly excited to have Clarence Eckerson Jr. on the podcast. I've been trying to get him on for some time now. And what better time than to celebrate the 1,000th Street Films video. And uh, we're going to do it. We're going to release this. This is going to be on November 12th. And uh, it's the 100th podcast episode for Active Towns. Clarence Eckerson Jr., welcome, man. Yeah, thank let's, you, thank you. Let's get I think started. I purposely delayed so we could have this group synergy. <laughs> and also a banner going right across the screen here. That is just <laughs> wow. That's our 17 fans. A absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> Well, seriously, though, it, it's it's so much fun to uh, to have you on on the podcast here and to have this opportunity to share street films with an audience worldwide. I'm assuming most of my audience already knows about street films and knows about Clarence. But let's do this. Let's let's have you just do a really, really short introduction, uh, who you are and how you got started with this. Oh boy, that's a heavy lift, but we'll try to keep it short. Uh, my name is Clarence Eckerson. I am the director of Street Films. I am currently up to about, I think, 1,003 or 1,004 films. I, I don't know the exact count. Uh, but uh, I kind of got started making films back when uh, I was in college. I bought my own video camera and found myself just kind of like walking around campus, just shooting random stuff. It was all al fresco. Not transportation yet, but cool things I saw. And I also, when I was in college, I worked for a, uh, a news station called WTEN in Albany. And while I was there, I actually made a short film with my friend Rick Easton, who still works there, which is quite amazing. Um, and that just kind of led, I moved to New York City. Uh, I started riding a bike within days. Like I bought a bike. I rode it home from Manhattan. It was one of the scariest things I ever did when Broadway was nothing but an ugly traffic sewer. And I started noticing things that I was like, okay, you know, some of these things are horrible and we need to start capturing them. And that led to working on a cable access show with a couple of friends that we put together called Bike TV. And then from there, uh, I started trying to do a lot more volunteering with Transportation Alternatives, which is the leading bicycle advocacy organizations and alternative transportation uh, in the United States. And I did so much work for them that I decided that at one point I was their head of their Brooklyn Transportation Alternatives chapter. And I was just like, you know, I'm pretty good at this, but I think I should leave because there are other people that could do it better than me and I could do something nobody else is doing. That's video. And that all led to just doing more and more films on the cable access show, eventually getting hired to do some um uh, freelance stuff and some films about traffic and transportation and uh, parking and cars and uh, trains and everything in that kind of green area that we all know and love. And suddenly uh, I was hired by uh, Mark Gorton from Open Plans. And that's kind of where I've been with street films ever since. Open Plans is the umbrella organization. They also uh, do uh, work with another number of other uh, entities, including Streets Blog. 
Fantastic. That's a great overview. And it, it, I, I love that too, because it gives a little bit of the, uh, the, the connection between, uh, streets blog and, uh, streets films. And that's, that's good stuff. Now, some of that history is, is included in your, your, your reel that you put together, uh, but maybe not overtly. Um, I want to play a little bit of, of the reel and uh, give us an opportunity to, you know, sort of comment on it live while it's, while it's happening. Yeah, and, this, is, this is pretty funny. I just kind yeah. of put this together because we were suggesting having some B-roll of me in the older times or, you know, some of my favorite films or spots that I just popped up in because I'm not in every film, not unlike what you kind of see on YouTube. I'm probably in one out of every 10 dozen films, and sometimes it's just for a few seconds. So I said, okay, and it then became a project of its own, and I thought, well, there's probably a lot of people who want to see it, even though we're doing it for the Active Towns podcast. So, yeah, yeah. this is going to be fun. Let's hit play. We really wanted to go out and document how bad the streets were, but also show people how good they could be. And right away, the films got people motivated and they use them as tools and they use them as rallying cries to say, let's make our city better. And that was, that, that was just a little um, scene from when we did a wrap up of our 15 year anniversary. Okay, yeah. And here's City Bike, City Bike in New York debuting. More and the as you can hear behind me, we had done at that point, and I think it still is probably more films about bike share than anybody in history. This was 2014. Yeah, yeah, and I think that you 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 sort of thought that maybe you had the record of the the most number of bike shares ridden and, and tested. And is that correct? Prior prior to COVID, I know that I either was or very high up on the list of the person that had tested the most bike shares. Oh, here's my son. Yeah. I forgot about this. We were going to do a film with Transit Center, and Clarence was with me. I had to bring him in tow because I had to bring him to the shoot. Yeah. And here he is getting his one of his first appearances, first real talking appearance on street films. Yeah, yeah. So you can hear right now. What's great about the fact that, you know, CE3 is is frequently, you know, a, a co-star <laughs> in many of your films uh, partly just because he's so fascinated by transportation and especially transit and trains. Yeah, he lo- he's a fanatic about trains, but he loves buses. He loves cars. He loves mm-hmm. every aspect of transportation. And, you know, I never really pushed this on him. I don't know if he saw me interested in it, but, um, you know, this is what I, I couldn't have helped design my own son be better if I really <laughs> tried. And now well, he's, he's he, it's fascinating this. stuff. So, I mean, he, he probably just kind of follows your lead and he's like, look at all the fun stuff dad's doing. Yeah. Oh, here we are in Portland. Wow. This was probably 10 or 12 years ago when I was a little more slender. Uh, this is this is when Portland and Portland is still great. But when Portland would just wow you if you lived in the United States. Yeah. Um, we also did a number of films, as you can see, are, uh, about covid about how this was the first one uh, that I did that I was scared to attempt. But, you know, back then we didn't know if you touched the surface, you could get COVID or anything. But I wanted to show at that point how cro- how not crowded our streets were. Right. Um, yeah. So, yeah. City, the best thing you can do is go out. Oh, this is Houston. Have you ever been to the bayous of Houston to ride? I haven't. No. That's, oh. That's one of how the. You, how, you're, you're close. <laughs> Relatively speaking, I am, yes. <laughs> but, you know, it's funny. I remember I – a lot of times I go to cities and I I have a good idea of what there is going to be to see. But sometimes, you know, I just say the best thing you can do is just roam. And yeah. the best cities, you just find things. And that's when I found the bayous of Houston and then was busy the next few days asking everybody about them. So – oh, yeah. Malmo. I'm at, oh, and yeah. here's – Probably. Oh, OK. I'm sorry. I was just going to pause uh, on Malmo there because I think it's one of those cities that uh, if I hadn't seen your that particular uh, video, I probably wouldn't have made the visit. You know, you know, I was in Copenhagen. Laura and I were there. And so we went out of our way to make sure that we visited there. And in fact, we rode the train 
um, with our Brompton bikes and went to Lund, Lund, or I'm not sure how they pronounce that, but it's L-U-N-D. Uh, and so we, which was the next major city, uh, you know, just north of, of Malmo. And we thought, well, hey, let's do this. Let's, let's, we, we know we can ride because there's wonderful infrastructure between uh, that university town of Lund, uh, you know, and, and ride down to Malmo. It was just such a, a wonderful experience. And I, I get the sense that you probably hear that frequently is that people will tell you that I, I watched your film and, and that was inspiration to do X, Y, Z, maybe travel to someplace or, you know, Talk a little bit about some of those inspiring, uh, that feedback that you get from your audience. I, yeah, that is one thing, especially the last five or six years. Um, I have lots of people who tweet me, who, you know, message me, who email me and say, you know, I went to such and such city because of what you showed there. And let's be honest, most of these kind of things are European cities, right? Uh, Nobody goes to me and go. I, I went. To, I, I went to Washington D.C. because I just had to see it because of the bike share system. They they don't do that in the United States, but they do that with like Montreal. It was just in Montreal. A lot of people went up there in just the weeks after my film to go up there and check it out and see what right. they were doing. But um, you know, and I know we're going to probably talk about this later. But Utrecht, yeah. When I did my film on Utrecht, that was the one film that by far the most people say. We planned our vacation around going to Utrecht because of your film or, you know, we diverted from going somewhere because of that. And then almost universally, when I get, you know, more feedback from them, they'll be like, your film is really great, but it's even better than you show. And you just have to go and experience it. And that's what, you know, that's kind of what the films are, jumping point for people who are in the business or want to know more about this or advocates, uh, to go and learn firsthand. And if they can't, they still have the street films and the films are, you know, I try to make them evergreen so that people will right. be able to use them for a long time. I mean, I still look back at some stuff I did 2006, 2008, and they're still pretty relevant. You know, I try not to cut them with dates in mind and, you know, just, just kind of just show in the moment what the films are, uh, what I'm experiencing too. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So I interrupted you when, when this scene popped up. So uh, set, set this up for us. Well, you can probably start playing this, but this is one of the most famous things that we have done. And even uh, Michael Mikhail Colville Anderson mentioned in his book, uh, Snackdowns. Oh, that's uh, right. I started, yeah, I started. So if you play yeah. it, people will see what Snackdowns are. They're essentially places where, where you know, after a snow, you can see where there are spaces that cars don't use and uh my friend oh there's clarence again uh uh but you can see right here watch this watch that that goes from that that's the same exact corner and you know it's not a hundred percent equal to like okay this car here comes another one that you know they don't use that but they can get around you can make traffic common and, and make your street more civilized just by building out the 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 corners Right. With neck downs or, or protection. Uh, and what's actually really interesting about the street, this is the famous 34th Avenue in my neighborhood. This is also the end, which has been now for 20 months an open street. And I'm sure we're going to talk about that a little bit later. But yeah, there's traffic rolling down it and it doesn't anymore. Yeah. Yeah. Did you coin the term snack down? Oh, I did not. I did not. Um, okay. Uh, Aaron Napperstack, who is, uh, uh, you know, started, uh, founded um, Streets Blog. We were coming up with, uh, uh, trying to come up with a, a number of people were going back and forth on Twitter about it. About what what should we call these things? People were like, they need a better name, and I, I had called them snowy neckdowns, and he just said snackdown, and everybody seemed to think that fit. Now the funny thing is, is you'll now get people will be like, snack down is one of the worst terms I've ever heard. It doesn't describe anything. And it's like, yeah, but before that, for years and years and years, I had been making films on these and nobody was really, wasn't getting any traction. Yeah. Except among like kind of the most ardent transportation people. But the snack down went viral. There was probably at least 50 articles across the world. Right. BBC interviewed me, uh, just a number of people about 
why snack down and what's with a snack down and it was extremely popular for two winters in a row yeah i i sometimes uh even see in the fall i i look at the leaves and go yeah there's a leaf down <laughs> yes that's something else that and and in um i think in la there was two people that would see like the palm tree yeah leaves come down yeah. they call them a, fr- a frond or a palm frond <laughs> neck down so there were a couple of uh takeoffs on that yeah hopefully this winter it'll take off again yeah every year it seems to go in some cycles so oh look at this this is wonderful transportation alternatives and um at the head of the queensboro bridge so uh do a look at all those people this was probably five years ago okay about five years ago get a little crowded over there sometimes yeah yeah um oh here i have new orleans showing off in yet another bike uh share station video and uh i told my wife this is that was probably where i was the heaviest (laughs) (laughs) uh here's a meatpacking district which now uh has basically created uh, a lot of car free streets in lower manhattan and middle manhattan and um and uh they're doing some great stuff uh um sort of like super blocks from barcelona right further we found city bike bike share parking protected protected yeah the, the, this is the the <laughs> bike share bike protection <laughs> i like it yes and there's rotterdam which that, that's yeah. an amazing city it's it so is. unique and like all its modern tech you know skyscrapers and then you got the small buildings right next to it and but the trams on grass are amazing i love that yeah yeah Exactly. And, you yeah. know, the uh, the great thing about Rotterdam and, and I've, uh, you know, frequent listeners of the podcast will uh, know that I've said this before, is I think it's one of the most applicable comparison cities uh, for North America because of the fact that they had to re- completely rebuild after World War Two. And so yeah. they built uh, based on the car. And then decades later, they were just like, oops, we, <laughs> we made a mistake. And then really <laughs> started to, to work hard to uh, transform their environment into a more Dutch-like environment. I agree. I agree. Here I you mean, are up in Montreal. Oh, there I, that's 2001 when I was there the first time to ride a bike. Yeah. The Tour de Lille. And this was, I think, 2013 or 2014. There's Chris Brunlett from yeah. – uh, from now living in the uh, the Netherlands himself, yeah. he's in Delft. In Delft, now. Yeah. yes. And there, oh, there's my wife exercising. This is in uh, Uruguay, where I also rode a bike share. There, they had only eight stations, but I rode that too. <laughs> so when you look back at all of these, you were putting together this reel and everything. What were some of the emotions that that came out while you were doing that process? Uh, well, you know, it's the enormity of how much time and effort I've put into this and, uh, you know, how tiring it is, but how much of a joy it also is and being very thankful and fortunate to be able to visit all these great cities. Yeah. Um, and to get paid an okay, good wage to do it, but, um, it's more about, I have a lot of creative control right? and it's about how. I get to educate people and show them things, even as I discover new things that I didn't know they had. Like, I'll, I'll never forget when I was in Rotterdam, uh, we stopped at an intersection. And they said, you know, this light will leave the light green longer in rainy weather for bicyclists. Right. And I was yeah. like, what? <laughs> and cool then I was like, we like have that. to stop. Yeah. Every, the two people I was with, I was like, we have to stop and do something on this because nobody knows about this except – Maybe people in the Netherlands. Right. So, right. I mean, you know, looking back at it all, it's 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 quite cool to have. I mean, I don't know how many people have a thousand films, uh, short films. It's yeah. Probably not many. Um, I know that Bicycle Dutch, who we all know and love, Mark Wagener, uh, he's in the 800s. And okay. uh, next time I see him, I want to sit down with me and him, almost like we're doing, and just talk about all the films we've done. Yeah. So I yeah. want to do something similar. I would love to get uh, Mark on on the podcast as well. So hopefully he'll uh, he'll see this one, and hopefully that'll inspire him to 
uh, set up a camera um, and we can have that conversation because you're absolutely right. I mean, of course, he 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 does double duty because he's actually producing a very extensive blog post for yes. every single one of his, you know, and and sometimes his blog post has multiple shorter videos to them. But uh Really, really fascinating stuff. Let's hit play. Uh, we, yeah, a we lot of people my... don't realize how hard a lot of this stuff is. This is one look of the you. first videos I did for Open Plans Street Films. You look so uh, young there. I know. This is probably 2006 showing like how yeah. painted bike clean just doesn't cut it. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. And then this is, again, another clip from our retrospective. This is what Ninth Avenue used to look like. Now it has a protective bike lane on it. Nice. Yeah. Um, so it's, you know, it's kind of cool to look back and see all this. Here I, again, I'm in Portland, but this is like the early 2000s. Yeah. And again, something I never knew was there, even though people, I came out there to hang out with people. I mean, look, there, I look so young. Oh my gosh, please. But they have a floating walkway, which is the same situation. We had no, uh, along the West Side Highway, we wanted to do something similar. Yeah. And I was stopped yeah. immediately. And I'm like, well, we have to document this and talk about how it happened. Yeah. Um, oh, another bike share. This one's from Ghent. Oh, cool. Yeah. Yeah. Another beautiful city to go to. And, and you know, one of my, one of my most recent favorites in the last five years to yeah. go to Ghent. So I was just showing people how to, and there's Mark, Mark Gordon. Uh, yeah. there. Oh, this, this should be, you know, really bizarre. So this is from bike TV, the cable access show I had. Yeah. And what we used to do. We essentially, me and a few other people, and I was mostly always the video camera, the person editing and stuff, but this was a promo of like 20 different things I had been in. And back then I was in the films a lot more. Right. And it was really telling New Yorkers and anybody who were watching, we had a few cities that also aired in for a while, how, um, how to go out and have fun on a bike. And yeah. things you could do and how you could get there. But in a way, this was kind of a precursor to bike, uh, to street films because bike TV, I started bringing my camera on vacations. There I am in San Francisco. You know? There I am at Acadia National Park. There's That's Adams, Massachusetts. So it's like I started kind of that process of seeing how that could kind of work. Yeah, yeah. That, that in seeing you know, there, there earlier, there's so much cool stuff to see. Yeah, and, you yeah, know, yeah. all these, none, I got paid nothing back then. I mean, that's right. five years of working a normal job and then. I, I like to say that I used to put like 70% effort into my films, whereas now I put closer to a hundred because I just didn't have the time. Right. Right. Well, it's funny about those, that bike TV stuff, the earlier stuff you, you had mentioned that it was, you were in the film a lot more and it, it reminds me a little bit of, uh, you know, the, you were sort of like this, um, activity ambassador, you know, you know a biking ambassador and, and just like, really that's what you like. I know out. that. Yeah, and and so active towns. Yeah, well, well it, it really but was, it reminds it me of our, our other good friend uh, Ryan Van Duzer because his oh, content yeah, is great. about you know trying to get people off their couches and go out and have fun adventures. Yeah, Ryan is just wonderful. I mean, I love that guy. Um, I he might be up to a thousand. I for, I have never asked him, but he might be close to a thousand films. Yeah, um, yeah. There's that's, a that's few a good people point. out there that have done a lot of really good stuff, and he does that crazy stuff where like he'll run a marathon. And record it and talk to you the whole time. And oh, yeah. I've I've run three marathons in my life, and I'll I'll tell you right now, this guy ain't talking at all. I might have a little fun and slap a few hands, but I can't rec I can't provide a running commentary. <laughs> well, not to not to brag on him too much, but uh, I am very very proud of of the stuff that he he produces. And but yeah, I mean he he will literally document uh, him doing an adventure, whether it's a a two week bicycle adventure ride or a hundred mile race. He, he documented yeah. uh, the Leadville 100 uh, when he was doing it. So yeah, it's you and I both. And know. he's very creative too. He has, exactly. you know, he has a drone yeah. in places where he's allowed to fly a drone. Yep. Uh, you know, he just really, I mean, you watch his stuff and you know what? I've probably done a few duds over the years, but like, I just am like, every time you watch a Ryan Van Duzer film, you're kind of like, I'm going to be entertained. Something cool is going to happen. I'll never forget. There was one film there. He, a spider was in his uh, in his uh, storage facility when he went to go get a bike. Yeah. That was one of my favorite ones. He was just like, reek, 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 spider. And he turned, <laughs> he posterized the, the film. And it was just very fun. 
Good stuff. A lot, a lot, you know, I think it's so funny. I do sometimes get people asking me, like, do you get jealous or do you guys all have like a, you know, the, all the people out there doing bike films? Do you, do you, yeah. do you kind of like, you know, is there a real healthy competition? I'm like, no. I mean, we all do so much different stuff and it's yeah. all so useful to different people. And so yeah. I do different films than Ryan and, 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 and Mark Wagner and, and even not just bikes. They have totally different films. They, every, Every and and the more of that we have out there, the better, you know. Yeah, well, and and, and I'll, I'll I'll pause or interject at this point and say that you know I've been incredibly grateful to you and to Ryan uh, over the years in terms of just you know you you've never hesitated to answer questions when I had stupid questions, you know, because. You know, I've, I've been in disease prevention and health promotion for 30 plus years, but, you know, five, six years ago, I decided I was going to be a content cre creator and, and producer of, of videos and film and, and now podcasts. And so you guys have just been amazing in terms of your generosity of, of helping mentor me. So thank you. Well, thank you. That's really nice. But obviously, I couldn't help you at all with the podcast because it's just it's a very different world. And I'm glad you've come to you know create your own kind of niche and creativity the way you put together your stuff i mean yeah even yeah. just going through the preamble the setup to, right before we started recording i'm just like yeah i'm glad i'm not doing this this is just i have a lot of people are glad they're not doing what i'm doing but you know yeah it's it's not easy it's it's not like you just flick on a switch and you start interviewing somebody yeah yeah good stuff all right we've got 43 more seconds on this one so let's play oh Oh, and this is the, coming back the full circle to Snackdown. This is just basically another film showing that I'm sure the New York City DOT didn't go out there and measure the snow, but you can see these are spots where Snackdowns would form during a snowstorm. Right. And uh, here we are, you know, referencing again, there's the Snackdown. So uh, a lot of it is real world kind of lessons for people. And this is, again, we were talking about the meatpacking district. This is looking back at the first iterations of what the New York City DOT and now the whole place is turned every year. It becomes more of a pedestrian plaza or like a super blocks. Right. Hey, that's the end. That's and that's the end. Yeah, it's <laughs> the end it's, of that anyway. <laughs> pretty, pretty amazing. And uh, you have to just kind of when you when you look back and you do that retrospective and and appreciate, you know, how many places that you've been and what would you say is like looking back, you know, in history, what was the film that really changed everything? Um, I would say it was probably pretty early on. It was the Bogota Ciclovia film. Mm -hmm. it, that film, which we, uh, we visited in September of 2007. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I, I say we, because Aaron Apperstack from streets blog went down a couple of people from transportation alternatives, Ethan Kent from project for public spaces, Right. Carla Quintero, who was our uh, great help with translating and interviewing people. She did a great job. Uh, that series of films really kind of put us on the map and also got people trying to see, yeah, there is a different way to, that things you know can be. Yeah. And at, I'll be honest. I mean, in 2007, there were a number of places in the United States that were trying to do the Ciclovia, which is closing the streets on Sunday for – 10, 20, I think down there it was closer to 80 miles, but I can't, I can't be sure about that number, but 80 yeah. miles or 80 kilometers at that time. And, um, you know, it's just so much fun. I mean, there are just people, I, I was, I was totally blown away. I'm like, here I am going to Bogota, Colombia. And I'm like, you know, thinking, okay, different country, hadn't been around too much outside the United States at all. And, uh, and wow. They accomplished this, and um, that led to cities like uh, San Francisco and Portland and New York City. The year after we did this film, all of them had movements to do this. And one great story I, I, I can always uh, tell people about is in San Francisco when uh, Gavin Newsom, who's now the governor of California, but when he was mayor, they would have you know monthly meetings like. And Ciclovias always came up and they said, oh, you know, can we do Ciclovia? And they'd get really close to saying yes, and then it would never happen. And they'd be like, let's postpone to the next time. You know, let's look at it next time. And then they said, 
at the beginning of one meeting, I think it was the San Francisco Bike Coalition got together and like, let's instead of using our time to describe once again, there's Carla. Um, uh, they showed this Ciclovia film and he was just like, let's do it. So, but, you know, back then video wasn't as big a tool for advocates and transportation people. You know, you'd always use a lot of photos and things. And so this really helped push the open streets Ciclovia movement into the forefront. There's Carla again. There, see, there's the gang of us. There's Ethan. There's the Aaron Apperstack. And, um, I, this film was probably the most important thing we did. I, I have films that I would consider a lot better now and more professional and better done. And I learned so many things from making this film. Uh, there's Carla again. Uh, and, uh, but this was probably the most important at that time to have happen. I mean, it really was. I mean, look at all that dancing. Now there's Carla dancing. I think I was dancing at some point in this film too, but, uh, maybe, maybe it takes a while for me to show up. Yeah. <laughs> That's great stuff. So with that in mind, then, you know, we, 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 take a look back to uh and really i guess forward to the um most popular most video. popular and so favorite videos of all time the, the most number one film I, utrecht is over one million plays now it's utrecht and yeah yeah everybody talks about utrecht they it seems like 50% of all the people that i run into that love street films will bring up utrecht yeah and, uh, you know, it's, it's a wonderful place. I encourage everybody to go there if they can. If you can't watch the film, you'll learn a lot. Um, but again, it's, you can't, they, they have one of the, the world's busiest bike intersection there. I think everybody always says it's right there coming up in that video right there. Um, I did actually a separate short on it because, uh, one of the things I try, I try to always think about while I'm out there. I, it's only me on these shoots. It's, I rely heavily on the generosity of people to set interviews up for me or say, oh, you should talk to this person or, oh, there's Mark Wagenbauer right there. Yep. Uh, uh, but uh, so when I was out there, I just was like, hey, there's a mall above the world's busiest bike intersection. I bet you I could find a window somewhere to shoot above it. And then I found a restaurant and ordered, you know, a hamburger or something. And I don't even think I ate half the hamburger i was just shooting out the window the whole time and that film alone somebody tweeted just one clip of the intersection and i think uh, over a million people just watched that here it's the busiest intersection right here you'll probably see a little bit of the footage of rendenburg uh it has just nothing it's only buses transit and uh bikes and pedestrians and um so this is that street and it's just really cool uh to experience it yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Utrecht, number one favorite, good quality film that I've ever done, um, and Bogota, number two. But that's just because. And there's Chris Brindley. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I have really fond memories. I've met so many nice people. There's the overhead shot of the right from the restaurant. Um, I have a few shots in this about that, but I, everybody's been so great. I mean, I. You know, it's just me filming, editing, producing, writing, setting it up. Everything is me. But there's no way I could pull it off without all the different people I meet and how much they do for me. And sometimes even let me crash at their place. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I hear you. And, you know, and you and I have had the opportunity to to be in the same place at the same time a, a couple of different times. Mm -hmm. uh, one of them, in, in fact, is is when we uh, we both showed up. Uh, gosh, it must have been. Was it 2018? I think it was. Yeah, I think that sounds about right. Yeah. Yeah. 2018. Yeah. And, and uh, you know, th this is this is what it looked like here. So there, there, there you go. There I am. <laughs> you were the first shot. I think that's so funny. <laughs> but yeah, I I, uh, I was going to – my main mission on this trip was go to Barcelona to see the super blocks. Right. And to this day, I mean, nobody's done a really good job of documenting it except street films. And that's why that film's so popular. But I decided – I was like, okay, well, while I'm there, I should pick up another city. And then I went to London to do the uh, film on the uh, bike superhighways. But this is who we both came to see, and we right, both Manu. happened to see 
we both happened to be there at the same time, which was just too ironic. And I, I don't know, I, I realized you were coming and I was like, hey, John. <laughs> And, yeah, uh, no, so, it, so it was, this is crazy. Here's like how they built their yeah. network so fast. So exactly. Quickly. Yeah. Yeah. Basically, it, it got built out in 18 months and, you know, they went from the majority of the bulk of it. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and essentially it was a uh, a very, very small percentage of people riding and and then they were able to, you know, get it up around, you know, 10 percent mo chair, which is just phenomenal when you think of of a place that can have that big of an impact yeah and it's funny because i make these films that of course they don't exist in a vacuum so i i every once in a while i'll watch an old film or have to be reviewing stuff maybe somebody's looking for some footage to use and i'm giving them permission or or i just get you know melancholy about wanting to look back over things and or or sometimes even when i sometimes an aut something will autoplay on my youtube it'll be one of my films <laughs> so uh but, uh, I, you know, you wonder what's going on with these places, you know? Like, yeah. to be it, a lot of the bike lanes were already pretty crowded. So did they widen those? I mean, and I can't be everywhere. And, and we don't have a lot of people out there doing this kind of thing. So I, it always makes me wonder, you know? Right. You come yeah. back from a place, you know, like, how, how good, how well is it going? More more eyes on the street, you know, for sure. Yeah. That's good stuff. Now you 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 mentioned that the main reason why you went to Spain was was the super blocks. Uh, explain what a super block is. Well, uh, I wish I had one of the experts to do it even better than I can. But uh, my film does a good job of talking about it. It's essentially designating a small grid, uh, you know, two blocks by two blocks, three blocks by three blocks, and keeping out through traffic. So that you can redesign the streets and see, you can see here, right here, that they, this is an intersection that used to just have cars running through it. And now they have a play space for kids. And there's Sylvia. That was Sylvia. She's great. Um, but it, it's so cool. The, the track. I love that. The track that people, anytime I was, I, I stayed in a hotel really near here and I was only there for about 36 hours and then I flew to Sylvia and, um, it's just amazing to watch how happy people are and outside enjoying this. And this is kind of finally what we're getting here in my neighborhood in Queens. We have a, we have an open street and um, we're kind of demonstrating that once you remove the traffic and that's not to say that there's, there's space for deliveries to come through uh, emergency vehicles. Um, even people who live there are, are in a garage, but you design it. So you don't have streets where cars are just barreling through. They, right. when you see a car, people are either there because they live there, they're making a delivery, or they're visiting somebody, and that's really about it. So that's the goal in some of these neighborhoods in Spain and in, uh, in, in Barcelona. So um, uh, I encourage people to go there too. I know that they've expanded the program greatly since I was there. So uh, that'd be yeah. another place I'd love to go back to, and actually, I'd love to take my family. So it'd be a good way to explore it again. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good point. The, um, I believe that, uh, there's a grid, we, see that, 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 that grid. Of oh, three and I went, three I three. went away from well, it. You don't have to go away from it. <laughs> but you know, that's kind of like showing you what a super block is. There, there it go. is. Yeah. There it is. See, All and right. there's, and there's Mike Lydon, famous Mike Lydon. Yeah. A lot of shout outs on this name. This, uh, this uh, podcast. Uh, absolutely. Well, you know, and, and you know, truth be told, I, I interviewed Mike yesterday. So <laughs> by the time you all have are, are tuning into this episode, which again will be the 100th episode and it'll be uh, broadcast out on um, November 12th, uh, you will have already seen the episode with uh, with, with Mike Lydon. And it's a good okay. one. So we uh, and we do so we're you know, feature some of your work uh, with with the uh, uh, oh, what was that the the, the he's Prince. doing some exciting work in Soho on Prince Street. yes it and was they a have Soho. an entire plan with the bid there too yes exactly so I would say super block that but just you know yeah kind of try to make that a little less crazy oh boy what do I'm we got pausing here? I'm pausing on this one so this is just three minutes uh, and twenty seven seconds I, I you know I'm gonna negotiate with you I I, I propose that we just play this because it's hilarious just play it and sit back and not say anything. Let's, you let, know, how about, how about halfway? Okay. People will get the idea, but this is Kate McKinnon from Saturday Night Live fame. I've had the pleasure of working with a few famous people, 
uh, when they were not so famous. But this is one of our most loved films. And I'll I tell love you, it. it's, it's one of my favorites. Ta- yeah. And it's one of the, the, the favorite film I've ever had making because she's so damn talented and she's so funny. And you just throw a phrase or an idea and she just she just ran with it. I mean. All right, I'll I'll let it run for about at least a minute or two before we say it. Yeah, yeah, you can you can you can butt in and I'll bring the volume down whenever you like. But I I think it's just hilarious. <laughs> You'll probably just hear so. us laughing. <laughs> <laughs> We're standing yeah, it's just bonkers. around the corner from the newly improved Times Square. I am horrified by the events that have uh, transpired, and I'm about to see their disastrous effects. Oh my God. Oh, this is disgusting. Oh my God. This is the crossroads of the world. Where are the roads? They've turned it into a playground. This is not Italy. This is not a piazza. Look at all a this piazza. space. Look at all this wasted space. They could put an office building here. They could put a car dealership here. A parking lot. Something. I mean, she's incredible. Oh, she really is. My heart. I mean, you know, this is from two. This is from I think 2010. It's at yeah. least 10 or 11 years old. So and here's this my question. Before she got for on you. Saturday Night Live. So. Um, but so my question for you on this, because part of what makes this so I can't funny, believe how many times I've seen it and I can't stop. <laughs> what, what makes it so funny for me is that this com- combined with the one when she was in the Navigator. Was yes, it a Navigator or nav. Escalator? Her Lincoln Nav. Her said. Nav. That was yes. So, uh, that was, uh, uh, Get in. This is my Nav. My Lincoln Navigator. So I go down to Washington and I just am there saying, hold up. What about, what about cars? What about the yeah, cars? Yeah. It's, that's just one of the, those things that is just so incredibly entertaining and fun uh, about the work that you have done. And, you know, it, it, it's, and it's so cool. Like you said, you know, you, you, when you have that opportunity to, 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 to be able to get some of these people who have an audience that's out there. And of course her audience has you know, completely blown up now that, you know, since joining Saturday night live and then doing movies and all of that. So it, it helps, I think, normalize, uh, in a weird sort of way in the sense that it, it broadcasts out to a, a more general population versus just inside our insular, uh, urbanism yeah. transportation bubble. Yeah. So. Yeah, Laura Bliss even wrote a uh, an article on how this even happened. It's uh, available. I think it's on Bloomberg now. It used yeah. to be um, City Lab, but um, okay. she did a great article interview with me and and even Jeanette Sadakan, who was the commissioner at the time, who said, "You know, that was a really fun, great thing because you know at that point there were still so many naysayers. Right? I mean, there were people like breathing down Bloomberg's back, saying, you know, let's let's rip this all up." It's not like it had been in only a year or so, but, you know, there's the constant fight of trying to get these really wonderful places for people and to remove some of the cars. Yeah. Um, you know, it's it's the kind of thing that you're like, eventually we will get through this. And, you know, it was one film that I made. I was like, I can help defend what New York City DOT did here and the administration. And I know that people are loving this. And sure, it might be creating a little extra traffic. But people are going to get used to it. And we all know that eventually it all becomes more normal. Yeah, yeah. And speaking of, uh, you know, the the, the, the difficulty and, and being able to do this, you labeled this the miracle on 34th Avenue. This is really close yeah. to your home, right? Yeah, I mean, I could walk a couple hundred feet and I'm on 34th Avenue. And what happened was due to COVID uh, back in March of 2020, uh, the city, after a lot of pressure from organizations, decided, all right, we're going to give some open streets. We're going to try to create some space for people to get some exercise and also to space out and to, you know, really kind of try to make our city have some place where people can go. 
because of this terrible pandemic. And it ended up being just so wonderful. Um, the volunteers and the people in the community are the ones that made this happen. And right. the politicians, like you saw Danny Drum there. Uh, Jessica Ramos is our, one of our state senators. She's great. Just all these volunteers. I just talked to them. And this is what happened to our open street. Now, 20 months later, we still have it. And it runs 26 blocks, 1.3 miles in length. All these great volunteers, all these people. And you go out there and you just see people really enjoying the street. They're right. walking around. They're biking. They're sitting. They meet up with their dogs. We now have tables and chairs on a few blocks. Uh, we have planters. And uh, the city has committed to making it permanent. And now they're kind of presenting uh, what are the next design options. Because it still could be improved a lot and made better. But right. it's one of the most wonderful things. And to have uh, a, 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 a son who you know learned to ride his bike there and learned to ride a scooter. And so many people in the neighborhood are just so like – just they love it so much. They really do. And it's the nicest thing ever. If if you're having a blue day or even a day where the weather's not so good, you can still go out and, you know, walk a loop real quickly. And so uh this was one of the easiest films to make because I didn't have to travel anywhere to make it. It was con I was just constantly like if I was bored, I was like, I'm gonna go get a few more shots of one of the kids' rock garden. There was a rock garden, you know. There's, that was Danny Drom, who's a, our city council person, who was really instrumental in getting this happen. There he is again. And so, uh, you know, this film is great, and I love it, and I know it's helped keep the momentum to keep this street an open street. Yeah, it uh, it really brings us back to appreciating just how powerful this video medium really is. Uh, you mentioned it right there. You mentioned that, you know, it helped keep that momentum moving forward. Uh, we mentioned it earlier too, in terms of, uh, influencing people to explore places, maybe helping them with lifestyle change and behavior change, things of that nature. Uh, your films in particular, just like Mark's films will frequently be used as, uh, educational material and uh inspiring you know basically you know community members taking the video and showing it to a politician or a a, a staff member and saying see why can't we do this uh, exactly yeah that, it's, it's kind of funny because i always wonder you know you get feedback from people saying oh we showed your film at a community meeting i used it in a presentation or whatever but i just wonder like how many there, there must be we only must hear one out of every 10 situations right. where that happens if, if that and then sometimes you know i find people that illegally use my film in another film or something on youtube you know what are you gonna do people yeah. are I, I don't do that but people do that all the time yeah. Yeah. and if it's helping them get better stuff in their neighborhood better biking better walking better transit right um, good for that good for that yeah yeah it's it's su such good stuff when you look back now on all these years um and especially, you know, looking forward, uh, what are what are some of the things that you're you're most appreciative of? Well, I mean, you know, when I started before I really started getting into video, you know, I was an advocate and I was kind of you know holding press conference and I was trying to get people more involved. And it kind of goes back to like me, my films are not only educating and getting people excited, but honoring the people that are out there doing the work. Because, you know, without them, what would we have? I mean, here in New York, we have so many motivated groups of people that are doing great work to advocate, to push for things, to things, the things that I wouldn't even think of, of, and to make it happen. Sometimes it takes years to do these things, you know? So uh, I, that's what I'm most appreciative, that we do have a huge number of thousands of thousands of people in New York City they are doing their own thing you know they're doing their own thing in their own neighborhood they're very involved every day the number of people that want this kind of thing grows and um, yeah I'd say that that's that's what I'm most appreciative of we have time for one more video your choice okay. my choice your choice oh boy 
if it, if it happens to, if it happens to be on the the the, the that top 10 uh, list uh, from the article I can cue that up really easily but I mean, if it's a little more challenging I, I I'll I'll be able to find it eventually <laughs> I mean you know why don't we do, why don't we say the uh, Oslo film I think that's Oslo. Top so, so I'll, I'll pull it Us, up. You, you Us, excuse me, Oslo. Oslo. There you go. Uslo. I yeah, will pull it up. You, you go ahead and start. Uh, uh, you know, the the intro to it. Yeah, I think that um, you know this was I think my last in my top ten, and Oslo decided. I think it was in 2016 or 2017. They decided they were going to have their entire downtown completely car free, pretty much. And um, so I was like, wow, after about a year and a half, two years, I was like, somebody needs to go and see if they've been successful. And I think ultimately they've been pretty successful. I don't think they, you know, maybe haven't even teased half of that goal. I, I'm not sure I haven't, you know, heard much since COVID. Um, there it is, 2015, they declared that. But um, what I really love about this city is it's so beautiful. Right. It is right. just so beautiful. It is like I felt like while I was there, it was one of the few times where I felt like I was making a really good film. But well, I was also let me interject real like quick. An artistic film. Yeah, yeah. Well, I was going to say, let me interject real quick and say exactly that is what what viewers are going to notice right away is that you did a little bit more artistic coloring and things of that nature. Talk a little bit about that. Well, you know, I, each film I make, I, I I don't really go in with a preset. Pet. I got to interview the mayor. Oh, you know, it's, it, a lot of times when I go places just to change the subject for a second or so. Um, you know, I'll try to interview important people. Like I just was in Montreal and really wanted to interview the mayor there, and somehow it gets around that they they say they don't have any time for me. But mm -hmm. then, like the last day or two or the last few hours of there, somebody suddenly will be like. The mayor will be in the film, and that's you know that's what's happened. So that was the mayor of Oslo. Uh, well, I was going to ask you that too because it, it seems like you just have really, really good luck of getting interviews. Uh, I've been out on the street, you know, filming a lot of different uh, events as well, and I, you know, I find it hard to get those um, those interviews sometimes, and and sometimes yeah. people are just weird about cameras, and they just don't want to be on camera. Maybe they'll talk with me off the record. Uh, talk a little bit about that because, man, you 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 have the golden touch in terms of making sure that you get just amazing interviews. Well, again, this it's almost like it's many factors. It's really kind of being in the right place at the right time. But if you interview somebody like from the bike program in a city or somebody at a transit agency, which is what happened here in Oslo, eventually – they will go back afterwards and they might watch a street film. They're like, oh, this film is going to be money. Like this is the gentleman I interviewed from Rute. I heard that they do the transit there. And, you know, eventually I'll be like, I, I might even ask one of them, I've been trying to get the mayor. Is there any chance you have any pull or anything? And Or somebody important. And a lot of times that's what does it. You know, it's just my track record, being in the right place at the right time, interviewing a few lower level people at first that are just like, this guy's interesting or I, or they know of my work before and they're just like, I've got to do all I can do to convince such and such to talk to him. And, and sometimes that works out for the worst too, because I'll be like, okay, I've interviewed 10 people in three days and, you know, I still have to do all the B-roll and everything else. Right. And, um, and make sure I come away with all the footage I need because I can't fly back here to pick up shots of people getting on a bus or whatever right. it is I'm looking for. And so, you know, sometimes I've had, Oh, you need to talk to so and so, or this person created this, or they did this bike program, or this woman has a walking school bus to school, and it's like suddenly you're like at some point you're like I have to stop, like I, I can't like, I can't put forty people in my film, right? You know? Right. So, uh, but it really is that's what it is. It's a lot of be, being fortunate, having a lot of a lot of help, a lot of connections, and being there at the right place at the right time. Yeah, yeah. No, that's that's good stuff. I, I absolutely adore your your work, and uh, I've I've just been so inspired by the fact that uh, you know so many cities and so many people around the world uh, have have discovered them and are using them uh, for inspiration, but also for paving the way to a a brighter future where hopefully more people are able to walk and bike and have more access to public spaces and plazas and, and just in open streets. It just, the list just goes on and on and on. 
good stuff. Yeah, even here in the United States, that's the way we're going. It's yep. taking longer here. But, um, you know, one day our biggest cities and, and some of our moderately sized cities will look a little bit more like, you know, Europe and the best cities there. But I wanted to be very uh, – tell you that uh, I'm very happy to be the 100th uh, guest that you've had on this series. And uh, I wish yeah. you a lot of luck. And like I said, I understand this is – it's not – it's a, it's labors of love. All of us are doing labors of love right. to some degree, even if we're being paid a little bit. I mean, you know, a lot of people say to me, they're like, how do you do all this stuff about transportation? I'm like, I make enough money. It's my hobby. It's right. my exercise half the time. That's why I can do all this. It's otherwise, yeah. if I didn't have that kind of weird hybrid lifestyle, there wouldn't be any street films. It right. just would be, I don't know. Yeah. And, and, and nope. you have to have that life balance, like you said, too. And, and the fact that, uh, you know, you're, you're a parent now and, you know, it, you know, that integrating all of that into your life is so incredibly important because it, it doesn't serve anybody if you burn out. Yeah. Yeah. And it is tiring. I mean, you know, I'll be 55 next year. Uh, I said when I hit 50 that I probably was only had a few years left. I still kind of feel that way. And yeah. then there's other people like, no, you must do another thousand. And, I'm like, if I get another 50, I'll be happy. Another 50 to 100, but I don't think I'll get that far. Well, let's close uh, us I, out. I uh, close us out yeah. with that because you told me about three years ago when you hit a thousand, you, that was it. You were going to do something new. So, well, what's the you future? know what? It strangely happened was COVID. I had all these plans to go to Montreal, which I finally got to, Paris, all these other places are doing all this great stuff. And I was like, 2020 will probably be the final year of street films. And that would have brought me to 1,000 films at some point. Mm -hmm. And COVID happened, and I couldn't travel anymore. And I started doing, thank goodness, like 34th Avenue Open Street happened. Like there were stories to cover here. But it put me back, and I felt like I got robbed, you mm -hmm. know? And I said, okay, you know what? My life has changed. The world has changed for a lot of people, sadly. And um, I'm just going to wait. I'm going to do some more films and, you know, see what happens. I mean, I don't think I'd ever stop fully doing films, but instead of you know doing 20, 30 films a year, I'd, whatever I'd end up doing, it'd probably be like just a few a year and, you know, just really specialized films that I want to do. Right. Um, yeah. So we'll see if next year is the last year. I also had planned to write a book, which I have, you know, a general outline of what I want to put down, but um, maybe the book will be in 2022. Okay. Okay. We'll see. Or maybe... Actually, finally get started this winter. We'll see. Yes. Yes, exactly. Well, I'm going to put our scroll back up because, yes, absolutely. And again, we've got to have our applause in there. <laughs> I got to remember. See, you can do things I can't do because you, you have yeah. a podcast. I can, oh, yeah. You can just pop up a scroll every once in a while. Well, so, celebrating and, and, 100. Active exactly. Towns podcast. Thank you. Celebrating well. 100 and 1,000 at the same time. Hey, Clarence Eckerson Jr., thank you so very much for your, your support, your friendship, your mentorship, and congratulations on 1,000 plus street films. 1,000 plus, yes. Thank you. All right. Take care. Now I got to go pick up the boy. That's right. <laughs> <laughs>